Tech with Tech PB. And now it's the winter time, and a lot of the questions that I'm getting in right now through the email is about gun upgrades, okay? I want to upgrade my gun, what should I buy? So, what I'm going to do is we're going to start doing some upgrade shows for some guns. I'm going to take some, you know, products that I really like, throw them on there, and, and you know, try to maybe take you through a sequence of what maybe you should purchase first, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, what, where are some of the best places to put your money and stuff like that. So... We have the brand new 2009 Smart Parts Shocker. Now, a lot of people knew, uh, you know, that watched the World Cup videos, uh, the Tech TV coverage of the World Cup, knew that there was a major turning point from 2008 to 2009 with Smart Parts, okay? The 2009 Shockers, they did three things with them. One, they came out with a brand new board. Um, that has the modes, and you're, I'm gonna have to double check my notes, but I believe setting number one, instead of having the five levels of rebound, now they have five levels of different modes, okay? One, uh, mode number one, which was usually rebound mode number one, is, uh, is still semi auto. I think number two is Millennium, number three is NXL, four is PSP, and I think Five is full auto NXL or something like that. I can't remember. I've, I've got the notes. Let me put it up on the screen really quick so you guys know. Okay, so you saw the five different modes that came with the stock uh, Smart Parts Shocker. Now, the board in here is, uh, well, I already mailed it back because unfortunately after Smart Parts came out with the updates after five years, came out with a new board, the, the rules changed, and the lowest you could get the stock shocker board with a default dwell of 12 was, I think, 12.1 balls per second. Shipped my boards back to Smart Parts and also my Lux, and they are now coming out with another update. So we're getting two updates from Smart Parts in the course of like three or four months, which is really cool. They're coming out with a new update for the shocker board that'll be able to get the rate of fire down to 10 balls per second. I, have, I, will, I will be testing out that stock board when it comes in, and I'll do a show just on that stock board with the settings and stuff like that. So, now what we have here is a, a bone stock 2009 NXT Shocker. Now, the biggest changes that they made going from 2008 to 2009 is one, they are now coming with a matching Q-Lock feed neck, okay? That's one of the biggest things. Number two is now the boards have real modes, real tournament uh, ready modes, like the board they had in there before, the PSP 3-shot, NXL, and everything. It was like real modes. And the third thing was they dropped the, the price from $700 to $500. $500 is a pretty good gun for the NXT Shocker. I'm actually pretty impressed. They dropped the price down to 500 bucks and now have a clamping feed neck, and they have a... Um, a, a real board that you can use at tournaments that's easy to adjust and stuff like that. But I will be testing out that board in a future show. Okay, so you got your stock NXT Shocker. Now that they dropped the price on, I'm starting to get emails. So people are picking it up, realizing it's a pretty good gun, 500 bucks. Now they're starting to give me emails about what should I put in it. So what we're going to do is I have all different things here of what I'm going to be putting on my Shocker. And, and hopefully this will help clear up some confusion. First thing we're going to install is the Virtue board. Virtue also dropped the price on their boards. It used to be $140, bucks, now they're $105. Awesome, awesome upgrade, not just for the Shocker, but for just about any gun. Virtue makes some of the best boards that are on the planet right now. $105 bucks for a Virtue redefined board. Go and get it. Another thing we're going to be putting in is the laser eyes. Now, some of you are going to ask, what's the difference between the regular eyes and the laser eyes? There's a couple things. One, laser eyes draw about half the power of the stock eyes, okay? So you need a little bit better battery life with uh, the Virtue laser eyes. Something else, too, that one of the reasons why I really like laser eyes is I'll never forget, uh, you know, I've had guns that have had laser eyes in them. They say the eyes don't work. All of a sudden, you start torquing down the, the grip frame. You see there's a point where the eyes shut off. You back it out. Eyes turn back on. You take a look. You realize you have a pinched wire in there. The, the, the laser eyes pretty much do away with any sort of eye problem that you're going to have. You're going to be able to see if your eyes are working or not. If you have laser eyes in your gun, you look down in the breech and there's no, um, there's no beam there or something like that, you know you now have an eye problem. So it makes it really easy to tech your gun and it also uses less power, makes your 9 volts last a little bit longer. Another thing we're going to put in here are some custom product stuff. The custom products on off ASA, the stock smart parts ASA, I've never been a fan of it. Um, it's just, it's, it's almost impossible to, if you try to put it up to your mouth and try to breathe through it, very difficult to get any sort of air through here. If you have any regular, especially a low pressure regulator, you are going to get drop off 
with the stock smart parts ASA. I think these are designed for CO2, not designed for high pressure air, and the, these ASAs are asking for trouble. There's just not a lot of, of airflow through this. Go with the Custom Products ASA, one of my favorite ASAs that's on the market. And I mean, the, the, the holes are so big, you can almost stick your finger through. You're not gonna have any sort of problems with it. The other uh, upgrade we're gonna put in the gun really quick is Custom Products Regulator, okay? The stock smart parts regulator, um, it's okay, but the problem is, is that if you lose your little monkey wrench, uh, which is what you need to adjust this thing. If you get to a field or you get to a tournament and you're either shooting too low or shooting too high and you don't have a monkey wrench to adjust this thing at the chronograph, you're either going to have to find an adjustable wrench if somebody has one or you're going to have to find a sock or the, uh, um, the open-ended wrench to adjust this thing. So that's my biggest problem with this. Everybody uses Allen keys, okay? So nobody has this thing at the field. So if you forget yours, you're screwed. So I definitely recommend popping this regulator off, putting the custom products on there. Now obviously by going with these upgrades, we're also going to have to go with some fittings. So I get my fittings. The, I love these new black fittings that are coming from Ninja Paintball. So we're going to be putting these. I've got some blue Loctite we're going to be putting in here. I get all my MacroLine from MacroLineGuy.com. People are like, are you plugging MacroLine.com? No, Pete Holland Horse is actually a moderator on PB Nation. But I love his stuff. He's got cheap shipping, cheap products. They work great. I get my TriFlow from there and I also get my macro line from macrolineguy.com. Um, also, if, if you upgrade your board first and you're just gonna go with the stock ASA, I definitely recommend getting yourself some TriFlow. Once again, get your TriFlow from macrolineguy.com. It's like three or four bucks, plus like $2 in shipping. It's the cheapest place I found it. Put it in here and lubricate your threads. Um, it's gonna save your tank threads. It's, it's gonna really help screw your tank in and out. So let's go ahead. Bring the camera in close to the first thing we're going to start installing on the NXT Shocker is the Virtue Board. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that there's a stock nerve board in here because my nerve board is right now at Smart Parts getting updated for the 10 VPS rule. And let's go ahead and take out the stock board. It's actually a really easy board to take out. It's got two little pins and you're going to need a .050 Allen key to get these little pins out. And then you just simply slide out the battery. Always be really careful whenever you're pulling your battery out. Okay. And then out comes your board. Now the most important thing that you want to do when you take your board out, when you go to unplug this, is do not grab this by the wires. You want to grab this on the flanges of the Molex connect, uh, connector and just wiggle it back and forth. The worst thing you can do is grab this by the wires and pull it off. You're going to ruin your little spaghetti harness. So let's just pretend this is a nerve board. We put that aside. Take our virtue board out of the box here. And here is the virtue board. And we put it in. Now you want to be really careful when you go to push this in. There is a groove here. And you need to make sure that your pins line up. You don't want to, you want to, you want to make sure that your, your uh, little Molex connector is not backwards. So if it feels too snug, back it out and double check and make sure that you're putting it in properly. I have seen people put this uh, connector in backwards and they bend their pins and now they gotta mail it back to Virtue and then um, you know Virtue replaces it and says be careful next time. So we put it in, no problems at all. Now it's always a good idea when you're at this point, let's just go ahead and test it. There we go, okay. So it looks like it works. Yep, looks like it works. So now what else we'll do is, it's always a good idea before you um, put everything back in, is let's go ahead and test the eyes, okay? Looks like the eyes work, no problems there, very cool. So we'll go ahead and pull the, uh, carefully pull the battery off. And now it's just a matter of uh, putting the board in. And then put the pins back in place. That's it. The stock shocker board is actually very easy to pull out and replace. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is obviously you want to uh, double check your trigger. Make sure your trigger, uh, you know, make sure you set your trigger how you want it. It's always good to do to do this at the house. And it looks like our trigger is fine. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to install the laser eyes. So let's go ahead and pull these out of the box.
There we go. A little sticker, and it looks like the laser eyes went underneath the sticker. There we go. All right, laser eyes are out. Now let's go ahead and pull off the macro line. Macro line is off. Let's go ahead and remove the regulator, and we're going to remove the barrel. It's going to make it a little bit easier to flip the gun around when we start uh, pulling off the eye covers and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and remove the regulator, remove the barrel. Now you're going to see once we get inside there, there's a little channel inside the body that the eye wire runs into. Now something else you're also going to want to notice is that on the eye wires, um, you're going to see there's a, um, a little tin that sticks up and on the other side it doesn't have it. So you're going to want to make sure that you put this in the right way when you slide this off. There we go. So now, we're, now we get down into where the solenoid is at. Now if you want to, to give yourself a little bit of room, you can go ahead and remove the wire harness from the upper board. And basically you just uh, you know, take it by the flanges, just like you did with the, um, the bottom board. Just take it by the flanges. There we go. Okay, now we have access to the upper board. Let's go ahead and take our Allen keys and start popping off our eye covers. And there is the other one. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to carefully pay attention to which way the tinning or the uh, the tinning is on the thing. It looks like the tinning is facing towards us. So now we know when we put our laser eyes in there that we want to make sure that that uh, the plating here is facing up towards us. Now we just want to carefully push the eyes out. You always just want to take your time and. Wiggle these out. There's a little channel, and once one pops out, the other one pops out. There it goes. Now that we know the contacts are facing us, let's go ahead and push the eyes in. It's going to take a little bit of manipulation. There goes one. Okay, once we get the eyes through, now what we want to do is let's go ahead and plug it in. And you just kind of want to use that little piece of reinforced plastic and push it in. There we go. Okay, now once we have it pushed in, now we can go ahead and put in our first eye cover. Okay, this is eye cover number one. Flip it over on the other side. And we will put in eye cover number two. There we go. And we'll go ahead and put on the, I go ahead and push the harness back into place. There we go. Now before we put this whole thing back together, always want to test it out. And let's go ahead and push the button. All right, looks like our eyes are working. And if we look down inside there, hopefully you see that. Laser eyes are working. So our Virtue laser eyes are installed. Okay, now when you go to put your grip frame back on, one of the worst things that you can do is to clamp your grip frame down and get your wire harness caught between your on-off button and your top, uh, your top board. You need to be very careful when you're putting together, especially with, with a shocker, putting your grip frame back on the gun. I've seen so many shocker owners destroy their upper boards and destroy their on-off switches by doing this. One of the easiest ways to uh, ensure that it's on there properly is to go ahead and remove your battery, remove your two pins here, and just let the, uh, the board kind of lay freely like this. So as you push it on, you can just kind of gently tug the wires out of the way. Probably the most common uh, way to break a shocker is by putting your, um, your grip frame and tightening it down without making sure that your wire harness here is cleared from your on off button. So we've made sure that it is clear. I have all the wires in sight. Nothing is caught between the uh, harness uh, or caught between the on off switch and the upper board. So now we can go ahead and snug the board down. Let's go ahead. And as always, we'll retest it out. There we go. Everything turns on. Eyes are still working. Very good. It's always a good sign. Now what we'll do is I'll show you a cool little trick.
All right, so the first upgrade we're going to put in this is we're going to replace this ASA with the 2009 Custom Products Mini ASA. Really nice little ASA. Now, inside the grip frame, there are there usually comes with one screw, and I don't remember what the thread is of, but I believe it's like a six by thirty second uh, half inch screw. Um, and if I remember the correct threading, I'll make sure I post it up here. But there's always one screw that holds the ASA on on the stock Smart Parts Shocker. I recommend going with two. Two set screws through the top. It's going to make sure that the ASA is held in place. And um, it's going to prevent your ASA from coming loose when you're out there on the field. So I always run with two screws. Even though the stock uh, shocker only comes with one, I go usually go to Ace Hardware, find out what the thread is, and put another uh, hex screw, another set screw in to make sure that my ASA holds uh, perfectly still. Now that we've loosened it, let's go ahead and move the Smart Parts ASA. Now we're going to take the Custom Products ASA. Really nice ASA. Slide it on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head and tighten this down. Okay, now something to consider is which side to run your macro line hose off of. I know that most people are going to uh, immediately consider putting the hose on the left side because they're right hand and they want it to be more comfortable. I actually say go the other way. Most people have a hard time shooting with their off hand. So put the hose on the on the right side to make it easier when you're shooting left hand. So you've already got an advantage shooting on the right hand. Why not put the hose on the right hand so when you're shooting left handed it's even that much more comfortable. So let's go ahead and install the uh, plug on the left side and what I always recommend doing is I know a lot of people like Teflon tape the Teflon tape usually looks horrible on the gun so what I always recommend using is blue Loctite you can get this at Home Depot one tube of this will last you forever and it always seals perfectly no problems I just put a, a small drop around it We can just go ahead and tighten it down. Once it stops, there we go. Blue Loctite, you don't have to worry about blue Loctite. Okay, a lot of people confuse blue Loctite with red Loctite. Blue Loctite uh, breaks free actually really easy, but it makes a really good seal on the... Um, on the fittings, it, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it, it uh, when it breaks loose, it kind of turns into like a like a powder, but it makes a perfect seal on the fittings. And once the pressure hits it, you don't have to let this dry for that long, maybe just a couple minutes. But once the pressure hits it, uh, it immediately crystallizes, and it's got a, it's really easy to break loose. So it's not like you have to worry about putting a torch to it. You will if you use red Loctite, but not. Blue Loctite. Blue Loctite, I use it for everything and it works out great. Now, the next regulator we're gonna, or the next upgrade we're gonna put on here is a custom products uh, regulator. One of the best regulators on the market. It's small, it's lightweight. I mean, look at how much of a size difference we have between the stock shocker regulator and the custom products regulator. I mean, this thing doesn't weigh anything. Um, it's definitely going to give you uh, not only a, a better recharge on it, because Custom Products Regulator is one of the most reliable, bulletproof, easy to maintain, easy to adjust. Um, you don't have to worry about carrying out a monkey wrench when you go out to chrono your gun. So let's go ahead and put some blue Loctite on our fitting here. I do like these new fittings from Ninja Paintball, these black fittings. Definitely look nice. And let's go ahead and tighten this up. All right. There we go. Got ourselves our macro line. You guys have probably seen me use this tool in the past. But um, this little tool here, you can get it from like a Granger or... Um, it's just a pair of tubing cutters, and it makes a perfect cut 
every single time. And I always say anytime you're dealing with macro line, always cut it too, uh, too long first, then worry about shaving it back afterwards. I don't know how many times I've gone to uh, measure up a piece of macro line, I take too much off and now I just ruined a whole piece of macro line. There we go. So we've installed the macro line. Macro line's nice across the bottom. Now if we've done this properly, we should be able to hit this with air almost right away and not have any leaks whatsoever. Okay, now the leaks we're hearing on the inside is because there is no air pressure going into the gun. So let's go ahead and start backing out the air pressure. Boop, there we go, it seals up. Back to screw out to where we get it to about where it was at before, which was about eh, just under 200 PSI, which we did there. So now we have no more leaks. No leaks whatsoever. Macro lines on there, feels great. Gun already feels lighter in the hands. Definitely feels lighter in the hands. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn it on really quick. Get the virtue board, as you can see, the eyes are on and they're working. Go ahead and turn the eyes off. So let's recap some upgrades for the NXT Shocker. First upgrade I would do with an NXT Shocker is of course the board. Virtue makes one of the best boards on the planet. It's gonna completely change everything in your gun. It's gonna give you complete control over everything on your gun. Next thing I would definitely upgrade is the ASA. The ASA that comes stock on the Smart Parts Shockers is meant for both CO2 and high pressure air. And the airflow through that ASA is not the greatest in the world. I would definitely recommend upgrading the ASA. Custom Products makes a great ASA. Easy turn, on, off, easy, it bleeds, everything works great. These are great ASAs. I'd probably get the rail mounted ASA just to take advantage of the rail that's already put in the bottom of the NXT Shocker. Next thing I would upgrade is the regulator. Go to the Custom Products regulator. Nice and lightweight, easy to adjust. And if you order, if you order these right off the Custom Products website, you can actually request that they send you an extra plug. So this way you can just pull your gauge off here, go ahead and plug this, use the blue Loctite, and um, it's gonna give it a really nice slim profile when you're out there playing. You're not gonna have to worry about the gauge sticking into your hand. Good place to get your fittings. Ninja Paintball is now making these fittings in black. Matches up really nice. Your macro line, I always get my macro line from macrolineguy.com. Um, you know, get yourself some nice blue Loctite so that way your fittings don't leak. And probably the last upgrade I would look into is the laser eyes. You're gonna use a little bit less power. Virtue's laser eyes uses about 45% less power than the stock eyes. So you're gonna get a little bit better battery efficiency. Something that's kind of cool. And we're gonna, you know, people like when I talk about gadgets that are out there. There's a new gadget that just came out from Trinity Paintball. The Trinity Paintball barrels, they actually have a functioning silencer. All right, let me show you how these work. I wish they had these in autococker threaded, but it's got porting on the front of it, just like any barrel, okay? So it's got the porting, tons and tons of porting on the front of the barrel, just like any other barrel, but it's actually got a silencer that you can screw into. What it does is, is it directs all of the noise towards the back of the gun. So when you hear it, it goes from like a pop, pop, pop to kind of a chuff, chuff, chuff. It actually works. So the, the new barrels from Trinity with the, with the silencer all on them actually work pretty well. So if you're looking for something to really silence your shocker or silence your eye on, pick up one of these barrels and check it out. I don't think they're that expensive. They work really well. So hopefully this helps you um, you know, spend some money in the off season. I know everybody right now is kind of staring at their gun. It's snowing. It's cold outside. You know, a lot of people are just kind of sitting there. The guns are collecting dust. They want to, uh, you know, kind of work on them. That's what I would do. Pick up a Virtue board. Um, you know, pick up a uh, new custom products ASA. Get yourself some fittings from Ninja Paintball. Nice black fittings. Get your macro line from Macro Line Guy. Uh, macro Line Guy.com. You know, custom products ASA, custom products regulator. Uh, Virtue Eyes, you know, you want to look at a nice, uh, cool little barrel, take a look at one of these new barrels from Trinity Paintball with a little silencer on them, and there you go. So you just put some upgrades into your gun, and uh, email me if you have any questions. Thanks for tuning in.